everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the stock swooshing and reviewing the week of January 28th, the expiration of that week, the advanced trader results for that week. All the trades that I called on the Gap Options newsletter for this week if you took an advanced trader risk. We had a good wink, it was a solid wink. I'm gonna go over each trade and there was an 89% win ratio. Now again, as far as your risk goes, it really has to do with the size of your account. If you wanna ask me what I think, I will give you my opinion, but at the end of the day, it's your money, and you have to do what's comfortable for you. And I think if you have experience trading and you have cash and you certainly could risk an advance amount. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP, and you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So everything that I do, including my options, picks, I use my Golden Gap rating system. So it's one strategy. And again, you don't have to have done the class to sign up for the newsletter. So there's no prerequisites for the newsletter. The trades are emailed to you in live time. You don't have to have taken the class. Now, do I think the class helps? Sure. Any education helps you when you're trading. Absolutely. But there are a lot of people in the letter right now that are making money that have never done the class. I suspect that some of them will eventually at some point take the class, but that is really up to you. So let's talk about trades reviewed. And again, this is an advanced trader risk for this week. <laughs> the week expiring, expiring of January 28th, I mean. So the win ratio was 89%. There were eight winners, zero break-evens, which sometimes is the case. Losers was one and nine trades. Advanced trader risk for all the trades combined if you took them all with an average risk of about $8,000 a trade was $74,300 and advanced trader profits $127,500 and return on investment 172%. So this is just for this week where all the trades expire the 28th. And again, we're going back to January. If you'd like to take the class, I always tell people you certainly can. I usually do the class once a month and I do think it is important to learn what to do. But that's up to you. That's your decision. I allow people to sign up for the newsletter without having taken the course. I rate the gaps in the morning in the newsletter. So that's how I'm making the picks using the system you would learn in this class. But it is advantageous to understand it, to learn targets, um, the entries, all of it. So it's March 26th and 27th is the class for March. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. You must email me for sign up forms if you want to sign up. Now, if you just want to sign up for the newsletter, it is $69.99 for a 12-month subscription and $49.99 for a six-month subscription. The trades are emailed to you. And again, email me at melissa at thesockswoosh.com. If you would like to sign up, you can sign up and start getting the trades on Monday. So let's go over January 28th week. This was a good week. <clears throat> um, this was the week of this expiration. So what happened on Wednesday the 19th, I called Usually I call most of the trades in the morning. Most of them are in the morning, like a lot of them. A few in the afternoon, but most trades are in the morning. Uh, it was called on Wednesday, and then it was a put, the 452s. This cost $4.70, 20 contracts, was a risk of 9400 sold at $25, profit was 40600 and a 432% return in investment. So a put is a short. So I was calling it, looking at the gap, reading that it would continue lower. Let's take a look at what it did. So again, this was the 19th. Take it up here. Take it over. Show 452. So I called the 452s. I think it was a little bit above the strike where I called it. Got the drop, 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 drop. Boom, drop. This was again a gap down. Close to your gap down fell. So again, this was this day. It really wasn't a lot of days, but it, it just kept going every day. And sometimes people say, well, how do you know where to get out? It doesn't matter. I'm very good at, number one, reading directional bias, but I'm also very good with my entries. In fact, if anything, I tend to be early. So, you know, if you want to get in here, get out, fine. If you want to get in here, get out here, fine. If you want to get in here, get out here, fine. If you want to get in here, get out, fine. I mean, literally. Actually, this was probably up, although I didn't look and see what the price was even the last day, because the last day of expiration, it was at 425. 
It had to be up. <laughs> it was the, with a 442 strike. So, I mean, I don't think people should hold the last day when they're up in a trade. And if you're down in a trade, it's a different story. But, you know, as far as your exits, there are some things I get good exits on. There are some things I could have gotten a lot better exits on. And then there are occasionally trades where I get perfect, perfect exits on. In this case here, this was an easy exit with the, with the gap down on the Monday. I mean, it really, really was. Again, you know, three, four, five days down, you got you to book the profits in the trade. So that was a that was a nice one, and that was let me go back here. That's why that was four hundred thirty-two percent return on investment. But the point was it kept going, so you know, it just kept going. So every day there wasn't a lot of money money management needed. You were up, you're up, you're up, you're up. You know, eventually you have to book the money though. This was Friday, the Netflix day that the, had the earnings the night before. It had it just bombed on the earnings from Thursday night to Friday night. I watched a trade. So then the next day I called this. I knew it would continue, rated the gap, rated well, called the 400 puts, boom. And I, again, I, I'm never doing anything. I could, you could have even done this for the day of the 21st, which is silly. I never do that. I never, ever do that. But there are people that do actually day trade options that do that. Because they do it because the price is cheap. <laughs> I like to build the time in for myself. So, and, and just to be, just to be certain. So the cost was $14, six contracts was 8,400 risk, sold at $45, profit 18,600. This is getting in it Friday, the day after the earnings, holding it over the weekend and exiting Monday. But you could have got out of this Friday too. I'll show you the chart in a minute. Return on investment, 221%, beautiful trade. Again, here you are. We had earnings that night, take it over. It was crazy, fell. This was at 500 something, opened under 400, it was ridiculous. I mean, I watched that trade that night, that was nuts. So here's the drop, here's the volume, here's the selling, boom, boom, boom. Here's the fall, again, close here, gap down, dropped. Nice move, beautiful call. A little pricey, but that's okay. Then the 390s, again, you had a whole week, a whole week. I gave the cushion, cost was $11, seven contracts for $7,700, sold at $35, profit $16,800, return on investment 218%. So this was slightly cheaper. It's the same gap. In fact, what time did I call this? 9.42. I called that one early, yeah. So I called one then after the open. Sometimes I'll stack them like that. Nice trade. Again, try to keep your risk similar close to equal. Try, try, try as hard as you can to risk close to the same amount based on the cost of the options. Then we did the QQQ, strike 358 expired the same Friday. Again, I called it out a week. Gap down on Monday, drop, fell. Uh, gap down on Friday, drop, fell. Gap down Monday, fell. Cost was 650. Contracts was 12. Risk was 7,800. Sold at 20. Profit $16,200, 208% return investment. And this is just from taking a trade on a Friday to getting out of a trade on a Monday. And one of the things that I always explain to people that's so advantageous about trading options is that for the very reason that options actually gap in your favor, if you're in a trade, you can make a lot of money overnight. And the only overnight risk you have in an option is what you have at risk. It's not endless like in a swing trade or an outright cash position where you own the stock, okay? and it can go against you, and you have, you know, infinity is your risk. That when you take a trade, if you risk $1,000, that's all you can lose, even if the trade goes against you overnight, or it doesn't work at all, okay? But one of the reasons that trading options is very advantageous is if you're in a put and it gaps down and falls overnight the next day, you're up more. If you're in a call and it gaps up and the next day, it's in your favor, you're up more. So that is how these big moves and these return on investments can end up you know, just skyrocketing because of the fact that you're getting it not only in the right direction, but you're getting then a secondary move overnight. You're in it, you get the move of the day and a secondary or third move overnight. You understand? Because it happens in the gap. And that is again why this newsletter, this gap options newsletter is so powerful because I'm reading the gap when I'm making the call. And that is important. That is important. And again, I'm doing all of this in the rating. But anyways, here where we were. Okay, the 21st here. 
So this was the day before. Then we got down. This was Friday. Again, this was the day of the Netflix. So the market was down with Netflix. Take it over. 358s called it. Got the drop. That was Friday. Gap down Monday. Fell, fell, fell. Take it over. You see where we are? Beautiful. So that was a really nice move. Really nice move from 358 down into the 330 area. I mean, again, nice trade. That's why it was 208% return investment. Then that Friday also called the 440 for 40s. Um, 944 in the morning cost was four dollars and seventy cents 20 contracts which was 9400 sold at sixteen dollars just a, it's a solid solid trade again taking the friday getting out of the monday boom boom chunk it out chunk it chunk it chunk it chunk it chunk it chunk it you take the trade you get the move get out take the trade get the move get out and again if you don't want to hold over the weekend because it makes you nervous right now with the volatility get out on the friday you were up on friday I called this trade early, 9.44 in the morning. Uh, fell into the close. Profit was 22,600, return on investment 240%. So let's look at this, the 440 puts. Again, 121. So take it over, fell into it, closed here, gap down. This is Friday, again, fell into the close. Then we continued selling off on Monday, fell, Again, this is red on the day if you're watching that live. That was a nice dream. Then we did Apple on Monday. I could have done this Friday. 160 puts it expired on the Friday. You take it, you get out, boom, get out. Again, chunk it. Cost was $4.50. And again, this is with the market. So I'm calling this with the market. You understand? So if you're seeing the market's going to bounce and you're up and you're seeing that Apple's going to bounce with the market and you're up, you got to get out. So you time all these things again with the market. Plus, I have the targets in the letter. Cost was four dollars and fifty cents. Number of contracts to twenty. Risk was nine thousand. Sold at seven twenty five. Profit five thousand five hundred dollars. Return on investment sixty one percent. And again, that's good. You're in, you're out. So sometimes I will call trade, and it will go immediately that day. Sometimes it won't. And and often when you get the market with you, that's ideal. That's ideal. Again, here we are, the twenty first. Close to your gap down. Rally fell. Close here, gap down. Here's the 24. So I called it here again to get over. I called the 160s. Fell. Boom. There's the drop. Four bucks. Thereabouts. So that was nice. 61% return investment for that one. Then I called the 430 spies. Again, from the Friday spy put to the Monday spy put. Cost was 650. Number of contracts was 12. Risk was 7,800. Sold at 12.75. Profit 7,500 dollars. It's a nice trade. Again, this is not a perfect science. If I have targets in the letter, it's close enough when it gets to it. You're looking for 100 percent, 96 percent, close enough. Again, you've got to watch all of these things. You've got to watch the market. This is a wild market right now. You have to pay attention to trades. And if you can't because you're working, again, put an order to sell you at 75% or 80% or 50% or whatever works for you. You know, it's, it's one of these things where you do have to pay attention. But if you can't, put a sell order date order cancel order to fill you out. And if you're worried it won't reach it, then back it off a little. Because this is not an exact science. And sometimes things go faster than you think. Like you take a trade on Monday and you think, oh, it'll, I'll check it tomorrow. So, I mean, it can go. I like when they go the same day personally. Um, so this was here. This was Monday. So remember I called the one on Friday. Then I called another one on Monday. And if you get this on Monday, then you know what I'm thinking for Monday to fall to. So you take it over the 430. It's got the drop. Boom. So that was a nice trade. 96% return on investment. Then the QQQs, 344s, again, Monday through Friday. Cost was $7.80, 10 contracts. Risk was $7,800, sold at 12, profit $4,200, return investment 54%. So this was on the Monday, got the drop and out the Monday. And the other thing I wanted to say too was, you know, I'm showing the beginner risk, I'm showing the advanced trader risk. You can risk one contract if you want. You can risk more than 10 contracts if you want. Do you know what I'm saying? You can, you set your risk. Your risk is based on the size of your cash. 
how many positions you want to be in at one time, and also your experience really too. So like if you're not comfortable being in more than one trade at a time, that then you know you have to consider that as well. If you want to be in three or four or five things at a time, which you can see here, I'm, I'm, it's an active letter. You might be if you're wanting to do all the trains and you don't want to have that much risk on at one time overnight, then don't, then I say, I'm only going to do one trade where I'm holding overnight. Or if you're comfortable with it, then do them all. You can risk more. It really is something that you have to think about. And once you sign up and start doing the trades, you'll see how things go. You'll see how things go and you'll kind of get a feel for it when you're doing it. Now let's look at the chart here, 344s. Again, this was the 24th. This is the day we gap down, Monday morning. So I call the 344s. This is already starting to go. Got the drop. That's why that was a little bit more. That was actually, by the time we opened, it was under the strike. What time did I get that out? 10. Yeah, it was already starting to go. That was a good sell-off day. 428s then I called on Tuesday. This is the puts in the market. This one did not go the way that I thought. I'll show you why it was not a complete bust, but you can hold this again if it's down into the very last day to see if it flips, which if you did, it wasn't worthless. It wasn't worthless. You could have got out of it with something, which is you know interesting. Again, timing has a lot to do with options because you see here on the 28th, it was actually right 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 there at the strike but it i here's the day that i called it the 25th and it fell and actually you could have get out of this here with money but i thought it was going to keep going and then it just didn't do it that just did not but it wasn't a total loss so if you're interested in trading gaps as options i think that that's something that if you're busy working during the day, if you have a job and you're busy doing stuff, you can get the trade on and then put a sell order. Like I said, if it hits, you don't have to watch it. It'll get you out. If you love options and you know what I mean about holding overnight and, and the money that you can make in options, particularly with a small account or a small risk compared to having a margin account, which you need more cash for, uh, then this may be something that you want to think about doing. It's baby stepping. It's learning as you go. It's not a class. It's a newsletter subscription. But many people have ended up doing the class after they've money, made money with a subscription. Have, have a lot of people that are doing extremely well this year. We have had a good start to the year. People always say, well, you never go long. That's not true. That's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely not true. Um, there have been many, many years where I've done a lot of calls. We have done some calls this year. We have done puts this year too. I do prefer to short, but it's funny. I prefer to day trade short, actually. I don't have a preference with options. I don't have a preference that I, ha I love to do puts or love to do calls for options. I like to day trade short more than anything else, more than I like to go long because I like the fast move. With options though, particularly with options, I'm looking at what's happening with the market. So we do do calls in the market and we do do puts in the market. The timing of it and how I'm reading the market plays a big factor in what I'm doing. So I think it's important to make sure that you get the direction right in any trade that you do, but you've got to get the timing right in options as well. But we absolutely do calls on this newsletter, and we will this year, and we have, and we've done it in past years as well. In fact, when I started this newsletter, I don't remember how many years ago it was now, seven or something like that. Um, I think when we first started, we were doing a lot of calls. We were doing a lot of calls. But market conditions change, and you have to change with them. And so we do, we do gap trades for many reasons. The market, volatility, news earnings, so many different things. Again, I'm doing the analyzing for you, and you're getting the trade to your newsletter, to the newsletter, to your email in live time. Again, in the morning in the pre-market, you can get organized what you want to do, how many you want to do, depending on how many I set out, and that's all up to you or if you want to do one at a time. Most are sent in the morning in the pre-market or between 9.30 and 10 a.m.-ish. So if you have questions, email me. If you're interested in signing up, you can sign up and start receiving the trades as soon as you sign up. Email me with questions at melissa at the stocks Have a great day, everyone.